coming up how to fix your brakes with just a can of coke yep a can of coke this is a 2005 Mazda 3 that has a problem when driving down the road I hear a clatter coming from the left rear wheel sounds like it could be either pads or maybe the strut the only way to tell is to lift up on the e-brake slightly to see if the noise goes away or if you want to just press on the, the brake pedal and if the sound goes away then you know that it's the brakes and not your struts so we take a look our struts are nice and clean we pull on the caliper everything is snug nothing's moving so um, I noticed that there is an e-brake cable attached to this caliper which means that the front wheels have to be caulked because there's nothing holding the car in place as we lift it with the jack and put it on jack stands. Remember, safety first. Then you can release your e-brake. Now for this we're going to need a lug wrench, some gloves, some anti-rattle springs. Coat hanger, 7 millimeter Allen hex wrench, socket wrench, torque wrench, brake cleaner, coat can, pair of scissors, caliper lube, some blue anti seize, screwdriver, needle nose pliers. First thing we're going to need to do is take off that spring, but what I like doing is I like taking a picture. That way, if in doubt, I can always go back to a picture and say, hey, this is the way it originally was installed. Once I've taken my picture, I am ready to remove it. The screwdriver will generally work. Put your hand over it in case the spring has a lot of tension, which it normally does. This one doesn't. Uh, and it could just fly out and take your eye out. So safety again is dominant here. Spring comes off. Now we're gonna take the dust caps off the back side. There are two of them. One on the top and one at the bottom. And these ca dust caps protect the caliper pins. Once the caps are off, we're going to use our 7 millimeter Allen to break the bolt pins loose. And it's about 21 pounds of torque, so it really doesn't take a lot to get these to come loose. Do the same thing to the top. And these won't ride all the way out. Uh, normally what happens is you'll get them part way out, then you'll maybe have to use a screwdriver to push out the pin far enough so that you can grasp it with your hands. Uh, this is the pin that came out. It's pretty good shape, just needs to be cleaned up. Uh, on this one, I'm trying to put a little outward pressure with the wrench to see if I can just grab the pin and pull it out instead of using the screwdriver and it slid out and I finally did succeed with that. So now we get our coat hanger and it'll catch somewhere underneath the fender wall. There's some holes there it'll attach to and once we get our caliper off we're going to attach it to that hanger so that there's no stress on the brake line. If you don't do this, you're going to end up having to replace the brake line, and that's not why I'm here. So, with the caliper safely suspended in the air, I can now remove the outward pad. It's nice and thick. It's not glazed. It looks like it's in really great shape. No need to replace that. The inward pad has the springs and they're not broken or damaged so that's good news and we just visually inspect it make sure everything's fine now i get some brake cleaner and just liberally spray all over the router and get all the gunk off of it and don't forget to also do the inward side of the rotor because that also gets dirty Now with a rag, I spray some brake cleaner 
and we'll use that to clean the caliper pins. And what I'm trying to do here is just get them nice and shiny, look for any defects, scratches, cracks, and not seeing any of that, these pins can be reused. These are the rails that the pads sit on. There are four places where they make contacts with the pads. And what I'm going to do is again use that rag, spray some brake cleaning fluid on it, and wipe from the inside to the outside so that I'm removing any grime that's on that surface. This will make it much easier later when we actually go to apply some lubricant to, to those spots. Now with the can, just punch a hole with the scissors and we're going to cut out a little rectangle. And right now the dimensions aren't as important because we'll refine it so you can cut big. Uh, the critical thing here is not to cut yourself because you're working with very sharp edges. So be careful. Once I have my piece, I can see that it's way too big for what I need it for. So I'm going to cut off a chunk and we're just looking for a thin L-shaped piece of metal to use as a shim on the brake pad. As you can see there it's an L shape, J shape, and it's going to catch on that leading edge on the back side of the pad. Now as long as we're here we're going to take our caliper pins and we're going to apply some anti-seize to the thread and some caliper lube to the body. We do the lube first because we're going to have to hold the pins and it's much easier to hold them by the thread. And with this lube, you just want to put on a very thin coat. So you wipe it on. You don't want to gunk it up. Just get a nice thin film over the entire edge. Just a nice thin film over the entire surface. We do that to both pins. And once we're done, I wipe off my fingers so I don't cross-contaminate here. And I get the blue anti-seize and put a little bit on each of the threads. And what this does is it helps absorb the vibrations so that the pin is less likely to loosen out. But at 21 pounds, if, if you're torquing it correctly, it shouldn't come loose, but you know, better to be safe. Now, these four surfaces that we talked about that we cleaned earlier, we're going to put some lubricant on those. So again, you get the caliper lube and you wipe from the inside out. And again, we're just putting on a thin film. We're not gunking it there and we're not trying to get it all over the hardware just on those four surfaces because that's what the brake pads are going to sit on. Now we take our inbound inboard pad and we're going to put some caliper lube on that because it has some springs and they need to move and be in a dynamic state so with some lube that helps that to occur very naturally without stressing the springs. With the caliper lubed, I'm careful not to get any on the pad surface. And we mount the inboard pad on the rails. Grab my outboard pad. Oops. See how the shim just dropped off? But you see where it's going to go. Now, I apply, I put the pad on the rails and with just a touch of caliper lube, our shim is going to stay on the pad. It's going to go on the upper left hand side of the pad as you're facing it. And now we're ready to add 
the caliper. Now in some cases, your caliper might not drop down because the piston, the brake piston might have expanded outward, so you might have to push that back in. Now, I'll give you a link to a video that I did that shows you how to do that. I didn't have that tool with me to do this, so I had to use a different tool, which I don't recommend doing because it can damage your, your piston. Anyway, once the caliper is in place, you're ready to put in your caliper bolt pins. And what I do is I use the seven millimeter Allen and I just bring them in by hand. That way I can feel the alignment and make sure that they're seated and that they're not cross threading. Once that's seated, then I grab the lower caliper pin and it doesn't matter which one you do first. And hand tight, make sure it aligns and then start hand tightening it in. And once you feel that it's threading properly, you can switch over to the socket wrench and just tighten it. Now I get my anti-rattle springs and make sure that they're facing downward and align the hole with the top one first. Then, because you're not gonna be able to do both at the same time. Get that one, first one into the hole and then get the bottom of the clip underneath the lower rail. Now go over to the other side and get the spring into the hole. And it's going to be a challenge because this spring is under a lot of tension. Now, I'm using this long nose plier, but I'm not trying to bend the spring so much as I'm trying to just to keep it in place. You don't want to reconfigure the spring. You're just trying to get it into that hole. Once it's in that hole, then you can use a screwdriver or your hand to get it underneath the, to get the bottom part of that spring underneath the rail. Here I'm using a screwdriver to get that spring underneath the rail. Then I can push everything into place. And now the anti-rattle spring is holding the caliper and the rails together. Now I take my torque wrench, it's 21 pounds, and it's pretty quick. And again, I had just barely hand tightened these, so 21 pounds is not a lot of torque, but that's what the specs call for, so uh, we go with the specs. The last thing we do is put on the dust covers, make sure you get both of them in place. And you'll notice that there is a gap, and that is normal. Uh, the difference is that now it's a shiny gap because you've cleaned up that pin. But that's normal look for the calipers when they're properly when they're properly assembled. Now all you have to do is you know get your tire back on and take the vehicle out for a road test. Now in this vehicle, I did replace the anti-rattle spring on the other side. You do it in pairs. Uh, I didn't touch the caliper. There was no need to do that on the other side. And this is where you find out your moment of truth. You take it out and if you don't hear the rattle, you know that that shim has made a big, big difference in saving you lots of money because most people recommend a brake job when all you need is a piece of shim. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.